Hello all, welcome back to the BioRock channel. In this video today, we're going to learn about how to figure out what blood type has to be donated to a person or <coughs> what type of a blood can be received by a person in emergency. That is, we are talking about the blood transfusion. So we are talking about the blood transfusion. So let us figure out how is this being worked on. Okay, so this will even give you an answer why blood group AB is called as a universal recipient and why blood group O is being called as a universal donor. So let me take first uh, about the donators. Okay, so we are speaking about donate. So if, for instance, if I speak about blood group A, blood group A is donated to, donate to. So I'm taking a person with blood group A and this person is going to have what? This person is going to have the antibody B. Okay, so you know that these antigens are immunologically very active and they trigger these antibodies. Okay, so see children, if this person is going to donate blood to this particular person with blood group A, we see that the antigen and the antibody does not match. They do not match. So there is no clumping. There is no clumping of blood. So this is 100% genuine that now you can donate blood to this particular person. Okay. Now let me take uh, the blood group uh, B. Blood group B. And this person is going to have the antibody A. Now let us consider this. If this person is going to donate blood to this particular person, the antigen A is matching with the antibody A. So the variable part of the antibody, you all know that the antibodies are going to be this shape like a Y, okay? And they are going to have a variable portion. So they are going to have a variable portion, which is going to actually lock up with this particular antigens. So we are seeing that the antigen A is going to get locked up into the antibody A, which is going to lead to the clumping process here. This is going to lead to clumping. So you can't expect that uh, blood uh, group A person can, uh, can donate. So he cannot, he cannot donate the blood here, okay? And uh, nextly, we will take a person with blood group A, B, A, B. And he's having no antibodies. He's having no antibodies. So what you can do is, children, if you're going to donate blood group A here, there are no antibodies to be triggered by this particular antigen. So there will be no clumping process here, no uh, reactions between antigen antibodies. So you can donate blood to this particular person. So you can donate and you can even donate this particular person to. Now speaking about the blood group O who does not have any antigen but he has a antibody A and he has a antibody B. Now what happens is if you're going to give away this particular blood the antigen A is going to lock up with the antibody B here so you can see basically that this is matching up this so the antigen and antibody A is going to have a reaction which is going to lead to the clumping process. This is going to lead to clumping process here. And you can see that since this is going to match up and there is a clumping, he cannot donate. So he cannot donate blood. So you are seeing that uh, blood group A, blood group A, blood group A can donate blood, can donate blood to which blood groups we have seen. By working on it, we have seen that they can donate to the persons with blood group A, to blood group A, as well as they can uh, they can even donate blood to uh, like uh, the blood group AB that we have seen here. So this is the one that you can see. Now let me take take another case, children. Blood group uh, B. We will be talking now. So I am considering now the blood group B person and uh, we are donating okay so donate to now i'm taking the first condition with blood group a he is having an antibody b okay now this person is donating the blood and the antigen antibody is matching the variable portion of this particular antibody b is going to lock up this antigen 
which is going to lead to the process which is go going to be called as clumping or agglutination. So you should not, so you cannot donate uh, blood to this particular person who is blood group A here. Now I'll be taking another condition where it's going to be blood group B and he is going to have an antibody A. So let me give, donate this blood here, transfuse the blood. The antigen and the antibodies are not matching. This is B and this is A. They do not match at all. So there is no clumping of uh, the blood here. There is no agglutination. So he can donate, he can donate blood here. And the next condition that I'll be taking is going to be the blood group AB. The AB blood group is having no antibodies here, no antibodies here. Let us see if we are going to transfuse the blood group uh, B here. Since there is absence of the uh, antibodies, there is no reaction between antigen antibodies. So there is no clumping process here. There is no clumping process here. So you can see that this person also can donate the blood here. Okay, that is a condition. And the next thing that we are going to see is blood group O who does not have any antigens, but he has an antibody A, he has an antibody B here. Now you will be seeing that this person is going to transfuse the blood. The antigen A is going to club up with the antibody B and this is going to lead to clumping of the blood here due to which we can say that he cannot donate. He cannot donate. So the uh, final answer for us is going to be that uh, uh, what can be right here is blood group B, blood group B can donate, can donate blood to which groups here children as per a calculation is he can donate it to the blood group B as well as he can donate it uh, to the blood group A, B, okay? Now let us consider another example. Now we'll be taking blood group A, B now. Let me take blood group A, B. Yeah, we'll take blood group A, B as here, the person who is donating to. Uh, let me take a blood group A person with the antibody B here. So this B antigen will trigger up with the antibody B. There will be, surely there is going to be a clumping process and he should not or he cannot donate to the blood group A here. Next one is we will be considering the blood group B who is going to have the antibody A and this person's antigen A is going to clump up with the antibody A here resulting in agglutination process and here he can also not donate blood to the blood group B person. Now going on to another blood group that is going to be A, B, who does not have any antibodies in the plasma here. So there is there are no antibodies, so you cannot see clumping. So there is no, no clumping process here. So you can easily donate. So you can donate blood to the person. Now coming on to the blood group, O, o does not have any antigens, but has antibody A and has antibody B here. So you can see that these are going to clump up with antibody A, antibody B now children. So both the antigens are having their respective antibodies. So surely you are going to see a very severe clumping hemolysis, rupture of the RBCs. So this person cannot, uh, what you call is donate blood, cannot, sorry, excuse me for this. He cannot, uh, uh, cannot donate blood to this particular person. So what the statement we can write here is going to be blood group A, B can donate, can donate blood to blood to which groups? He can donate blood to the A, B person and he can even uh, donate any other person he can donate to. No, he's not able to donate to anyone. He can only donate to blood group A, B children. So the next uh, thing that we'll see is a O blood group, O blood group without any antigens. Now let me consider 
he is donating blood to the blood group A, which is going to have the antibody B here. And uh, we see that there are no antigens, so there is no reaction, so no clumping of the blood. And we can see that he can truly donate blood. Okay, he can donate blood here. Next one is going to be blood group B here where we are going to have the antibody A. And though we give the blood group O here, since there are no antigens here, there is no clumping seen. So he can also donate. He can also donate. That is blood group O can donate to blood group B. And next we are going to have is blood group A and B, who is going to have these antigens, but there are no antibodies. You can see that no antigens present in this person, no antibodies in this person. There is no chance of getting a clumping. So you can donate blood here. You can donate blood here. The next one is uh, the blood group O giving to the blood group O. He's having uh, what you call his antibodies like antibody A, antibody B, but children, there are no antigens to react. So there is no clumping process here. He can also donate. So you can see that since he can donate to A, B, and AB blood groups, O blood groups, O blood group is being called as a universal, universal donor we are going to call. I think you have got your answer for what reason we call it as a universal donor. Now let me take another condition children about, uh, I'll take a A person, okay, blood group A person, and he is going to receive the blood group, okay, receiving. Let me take a condition. So this person is going to have the antibody B, and now he's receiving from, he's receiving from a blood group A person. So this is entering now. So A antigen is going to trigger the antibody B, but they are not matching. So it is going to be no clumping process, no clumping process. So you can easily, uh, what you call is a uh, donate, you can donate or this person can actually receive blood from A. And the next thing that we'll be considering is going to be blood group B. Blood group B, when it is going to come up into the person who is receiving blood group A, that is into this person, the antibody B and the antigen B is going to have a reaction which leads to the clumping process. So he should not receive a so he should not receive this particular blood that is the B person. So you cannot. And then next we are going to have is a AB. And we see that the B is going to get reacting with the B. B antigen here is reacting with the antibody B. So this is going to uh, lead to the clumping process. Okay, this is going to lead to clumping process. Let me check it out, children. So A and B, there is no clumping, but here you are seeing that B and B are going to be clumping. So let me take this particular uh, sign as correct. So this is going to be uh, clumping. So he should not receive, let me write it here. He should not receive. And uh, we can see that even B is there. So this is clumping. So he should not receive. He should not receive. He should not receive. And uh, secondly, we are going to have, oh, no antigens at all, no antigens. So there is going to be no clumping process here, children, no clumping process. Uh, so you can see that, see, A is going to have uh, this, uh, yeah, no clumping process. So here also you can actually uh, receive. So you can receive here, you can receive. So the ultimate uh, answer for this is going to, a can receive, A can receive blood from whom it's going to be a no clumping. So you can receive from the person who is going to be A as well as he can receive. Here also there is no clumping. So he can receive from the blood group O. Okay, so that is your solution for that. And next we'll work out on the receiving that is a B blood group. Let us check. So this is a blood group B person having the antibody A here. And he is going to receive, receive from whom? So let us see, consider blood group A, this antigen enters into the blood. 
and the antibody A antigen A are there, so they surely are going to clump. So do not receive from this person, do not receive from this person. Next we are going to have is blood group B. When the antigen B enters over here, uh, we can see that um, this person is going to have an antigen A. So there is no clumping, there is no clumping. So he can receive, he can receive this blood here children. Next thing we are going to have is blood group uh, A, B, okay? So you can see that the A antigen will clump up with the antibody A. So A antigen with the antibody A, so this is going to be clumping. So it's going to be, do not receive, do not take up the blood from this particular person. Next, we are going to have is O without any antigen. So since there are no antigens, you can freely give the blood. So this is going to be, no clumping, no clumping. So if there is no clumping children, you can receive, you can receive the blood. So the final ultimatum is the blood group B person, a blood group B person can receive blood, can receive blood from, from which blood groups is that? That is going to be, uh, he can receive from B and he can receive from O. So this is your answer for that. Now let us go with another condition that is going to be blood group A and B. They do not have any, any antibodies to react at all. So I hope there is no need to explain you by taking because there are no antibodies to react to the antigens coming up. So no antibodies, no agglutination process. So therefore your AB is called as a universal, universal recipient. So he's going to be a universal recipient as the antigens, since there are no antibodies, there is no reaction. Next, coming on to the blood group O, he is going to have an antibody A, he is going to have antibody B. Whichever the blood group you are going to give is going to be troublesome because uh, the blood group A, if it is going to donate, this is also going to lead to the clumping process. If we are going to donate blood from the antibody, that is your blood group B, the antibody A is going to react to it. There will be surely clumping process which has been present. If you take up the blood group A, B here, surely there is going to be a drastic clumping between both of these antigens and the antibodies. But blood group O, since it does not have any antigens, the antibodies here cannot react. So there is a no clumping process, no clumping process. So the thing that you can draw a conclusion is therefore the blood group O can receive, can receive blood from whom? He can receive blood from only, only O. It's going to be only the O blood group because whichever you give, they have their antibodies to react and clump. So these are the things that you need to understand children. And if I speak about uh, <clears throat> the RH factor, I told you that uh, uh, the one thing, this is very, very important for you, RH positive person will never, will never ever produce antibodies, will never produce antibodies <coughs> antibodies against RH, against RH. So there are no anti-RH seen in the RH positive person, but there is a basic uh, difference between the negative persons now. RH negative persons, if they are exposed, if they are exposed, if they are exposed to a uh, uh, what you call is RH positive blood during pregnancy or it might be uh, during, so we'll take two conditions. One will be during pregnancy or if it is going to be during your uh, blood transfusions, if any uh, positive blood, like O positive or any positive being given to a person with negative blood group, okay? So during the blood transfusions, if the 
uh, mistakenly if they are exposed to the positive then surely rh negative person is going to produce is going to produce the antibodies against the rh which we are going to call as the anti rh these are the antibodies which are going to act act against act against the rh antigen this is very very important children and there are many other such cases that you can see you work out in the same manner you will get to your answers whether you can or not give to but uh, if you wish i can give you a uh, one particular example where you can see that uh, a positive person whether he can receive blood from b uh, ne negative let me take this as a yeah a positive b positive receive from so i am giving you one example so a positive person is with a this particular one and rh is going there a and rh antigens what are the antibodies present antibody b but there is no antibody for rh positive persons right so now if you are going to give this uh, b positive blood here what happens is b positive b antigen with antibody b is going to surely lead to clumping process and you should not donate you should not donate but now let me take another example a negative person a negative is nothing but he has only a but he does not have any rh okay now he is receiving from b positive let us see here <coughs> this person a negative person is surely going to have rh antibodies because he is getting exposed to whom positive blood as well as he is having the antibody b now what happens is this antigen is going to clump up with this and uh, uh, what he call is rh antigens present on his blood this rh are going to clump away with rh antibodies this will surely lead to a severely clumping process here which will surely be very lethal it is going to be very uh, what he call is a uh, uh, fatal to the person so he cannot donate i hope you understood how we work on the positive on the negative if you take a negative person you need to compulsorily add up the rh antibodies now you can solve many of the transfusions in this way i hope children you all have understood regarding how to calculate to find out which person can donate or not donate to or who can receive and not okay this is the topic for today children i hope you all have understood if you like the video please do hit the like button and do share my channel to the others and subscribe my channel thank you all thank you thank you